Eduardo Camavinga is yet another wonderkind to come out of France. Yes, another one. And according to Willy Sagnol, he should be receiving just as much attention as a certain Kylian Mbappe. Camavinga is going to be one of the best players in the world. He's hugely talented. Mbappe is a forward, so he gets a lot of attention, but Camavinga is definitely on an equal footing with him. He's got so much potential, an unusual potential to be frank. He plays almost like a 30-year-old. Because of this maturity mixed with unusual potential, as Sagnol put it, Camavinga quickly became one of the most sought after talents in football. Making it through every hardship he's had to face, he's come out on the other side as a Real Madrid player at the tender age of 18. Hey, I'm Adrian and welcome to this look at the life and very, very early career of Eduardo Camavinga. On top of that, we'll also be joined by data analyst Mark Carey from The Athletic, and he's also the co-host of the Football Fanalytics podcast. He'll guide us through what kind of player Camavinga is and what he can offer Real Madrid. So let's get this started off in a refugee camp in Angola in the year 2002. Eduardo Camavinga's parents hail from the Democratic Republic of the Congo's capital city, Kinshasa, but fled to Angola during the Second Congo War, along with many other displaced Congolese. Thus, Eduardo Camavinga was born on November 10, 2002, in a refugee camp in Mikonge, Angola, as the third of a total of six children. One year later, in 2003, the Camavingas moved to France, first to Lille, and finally to Fougères, about 50 kilometers northeast of Rennes. Whenever you read about footballers who managed to make it professionally, a common sentiment is that they had played with a football ever since they could walk, or that they became obsessed with the sport shortly thereafter. But with Eduardo, that wasn't necessarily the case, and it's not that he isn't interested in football, far from it. Just that his first sport was actually judo. His father practiced the martial art and signed his son up for it as well. But at the age of seven, his mother finally signed him up to play for his local side, Drapeau Fouget. After about a year or so of training, Eduardo began what would become all too familiar for him in his football career, playing with other players that are older than him. From about eight years old onward, Eduardo was always playing a year or two above his own. Given Fougere's close proximity to Rennes, Eduardo began making a name for himself in the local youth football scene, catching the eye of Rennes and eventually signing for their youth side in 2012. But the Camavingas faced another challenge. After fleeing Kinshasa for the refugee camp in Angola and then emigrating to France and building a family home in Fougères, said home burned down in 2013, taking with it all of the family's possessions and by extension, their savings. As Eduardo remembered when speaking to French publication West France, quote, we had been at that house which my parents had built for less than a year. I remember the fire as if it were yesterday. I was at school and saw the firefighters passing out of the window. At the end of the class, the teachers came to me and my little sister and explained what had happened. My dad came to get us and took us there. Everything was burned. Everything was destroyed. 24 hours after the tragedy of losing their family home and all of their possessions, Eduardo was back at training, to which he said that playing football helped him to relax and provided a means of escape from the sad reality that they were living in. But from that, Eduardo remembers what his father said to him. Quote, Don't worry, you're going to be a great footballer and we'll rebuild this house. It's true that he told me that. I was the family's hope. Suddenly, I was motivated. My parents were already happy, but I knew I could make them even happier. You know, the one thing that is so often spoke of when people are discussing Eduardo Camavinga is the maturity he exhibits. On the pitch, of course, which we will go over later in this video, but off of it as well. No doubt the life he has lived has contributed to that, as we are products of our environments in some respects. But speaking of Camavinga on the pitch, let's continue on to Ren. The Camavinga's house fire came at a time when Eduardo was in the process of integrating himself within the Ren youth setup. Signing with them at the age of 11, Camavinga again excelled and was a top performer within every age category that he played in for Ren. As he continued to grow as a player, he once again was capable of keeping up with, and in most cases outperforming, players that were in a much higher age bracket than himself. He did so well in this regard that in December of 2018, at the age of 16 years, one month, and four Four days, he signed his first professional contract with Ren. And yes, he broke the record to become the youngest professional in the history of the club. He made his league debut with Les Rouges et Noirs on April 6, 2019, coming on as a late substitute in a 3-3 draw with Angers, making him the youngest player to ever feature for Rennes in a Ligue 1 match. 
He got his first professional start against AS Monaco about one month later, as Kamavinga finished the 2018-19 season by starting in four of the final five Ligue 1 matches for Rennes. At this time, he was employed as a defensive midfielder, often playing in a double pivot. During the following season, the 2019-20 campaign, Kamavinga was always one of the first names on the team sheet, making a total of 36 appearances across all competitions for Rennes in what was an extremely successful Champions League qualifying season. In the 2020-21 season, even more appearances, including starting every match he was available for in the Champions League, four from four, as he was injured for the first two matches against Sevilla and Chelsea. In September of 2020, Kamavinga also got his first senior national side call-up, making his debut as a substitute in France's Nations League win over Croatia, and thus becoming the youngest player to appear for France since Maurice Gastiget did so in 1914. Eduardo was 17 years and 9 months old. So impressive was Camavinga during the 2020-21 season that in the summer of 2021, despite numerous approaches from other clubs, Eduardo held out for Real Madrid, making the 31 million euro move on August 31st, 2021. So that begs the question, what kind of player are Real Madrid getting? So talented was Eduardo that despite his age and inexperience, he was entrusted with the defensive midfield role at Rennes when he was just 16 years old. That says a lot about his maturity and ability on the ball, his decision making and composure, as the stakes are extremely high for a defensive midfielder. A misplaced pass, a failed attempt at a dribble or a lapse in concentration while marking can all be fatal for your side when you're sitting right in front of the back line. He excelled in this position, but over the past year or so, has been pushed slightly further up the field ahead of the unknown Steven Nzonzi, who took over the defensive midfielder position at Rennes. So, in order to get a closer look at Kamavinga's on-pitch attributes, his strengths, weaknesses, and style of play, let's now speak to Mark Carey from The Athletic, who wrote a brilliant article on the data that speaks to what Kamavinga could offer to any potential suitor, now known to be Real Madrid. Mark, let's start with some basic stuff, because I know that Kamavinga, he's been used in a few different roles, sort of in central midfield, you know, defensively, then pushed up the pitch a little bit. But where would you say that he had more of his success? Where has he been best employed, would you say? I'd probably say, yeah, a little bit further forward. I think so. The, the year that he had, the breakout year that he had, which was 2019-20, he was probably more in a defensive midfield role. But since then, the 2020-21 season, where Steven Zonzi came in, he would be more of the, in the, the holding role and Kamavinga would play just slightly ahead of him, probably more towards the right. So he'd operate more in that sort of half space in the right where he could come inside onto his left. But I'd say that he, he operates well in that, those sort of spaces because, and I'm sure we'll come on to it, just how good he is on the ball in, in sort of evading uh, the opposition and being very, very press resistant, that he sort of operates well as being key in that build up. Uh, and he'll often drop deep anyway, but being key in that, that build up that he has a bit more license to roam, which is where his obviously his strengths lie rather than being kind of restricted. Um, you have to have quite a disciplined role in that holding role. Um, so I'd say that his his best role is just ahead of the uh, sort of the defensive midfield role. So if someone was looking to sort of put a label on it, would you say that he's sort of like a, a number eight, sort of like a box to box type midfielder in a sense? I'd say so. And again, this is something we can we can come on to, that his versatility is what makes him such a, a great prospect. And we have to obviously keep reinforcing that he is only 18 years old, which is quite something. So I think that at the moment, I would say that. But as I say, with his, with his recent move, of course, he can be almost whoever he wants to be and that he can be that box to box midfielder if he wants to be. He could very easily be that defensive midfielder and I'm sure he'll develop more sort of tactical discipline. You know, his skill set is very, very creative and very, very free. To, to be allowed to have that that freedom of a box to box midfielder, you do want to exploit his strengths. So I'd probably say so at the moment. You know, we've sort of tiptoed around it, his strengths, etc. So why don't we just get right into it? So what are some of the key areas that Eduardo, he really thrives in when looking at, you know, his passing or his movement on the ball, off the ball work? Where would you say he's really, really excelling? I'd say, as you say, his passing, I think, maybe I'm sort of already starting with a bit of a weakness, but his passing is, is fantastic. It's very, very controlled, which I think is a real strength of his. I think that he doesn't necessarily look for the the long searching balls, raking balls upfield, but that's that's fine. He doesn't need to be that sort of player. But I think that one of his key strengths is the diversity of his ability, right? So I think that he's very, very good on the ball with his passing. So, you know, you, you step off him as the opponent and he'll pass around you. But if you try and get too tight to him, he can also dribble around you. He can also carry the ball really well. So for a central midfielder, 
someone who's able to carry the ball that well is, is quite a rare skill. Often it will be more of a, you know, a pass master in the middle, I think. And that's that's one of his, his real skills that he's able to get on the ball, be able to evade the opponent in really tight spaces and progress the ball upfield without even needing to pass. But as I say, if you do step off him, maybe not the most um, adventurous, shall we say, in his passing, but he retains the ball really well. Often decision-making is obviously key to being a, a really good midfielder. And for someone who's 18, you'd expect them to make, you know, some wrong decisions every now and again. And I think for his age, he, he has a really great appreciation of the space, but his decision making is, is fantastic as well. Definitely, it speaks to his ability and, you know, his maturity or his decision making, whatever you want to call it, when he's 16, 17 years old and he's starting in that defensive midfield position because it's such a high stakes area of the pitch where whether it's, you know, you're not switched on and you're watching your man or you make a misplaced pass or you try to dribble when you shouldn't be doing so. For him to excel in that position at such a young age is so, so impressive to me. So let's speak about that for a moment, actually. How is his defensive ability how's his tackling his reading of the game etc well his, his reading the game will only improve obviously through being older but i think the the key thing that's a real strength of his at the moment is his his energy off the ball as well so it kind of can make up for any tactical ill discipline um because he's very very active um you know off the ball so looking at uh, data from stats bomb he has 23.2 pressures per 90 which is amongst the top 15 percent of central midfielders in europe so it shows just how tight he's looking to to get to his man and making sure that he does kind of harry the opposition so he's a bundle of energy he can get across the pitch um very very easily and that does as i say make up for any of his uh tactical ill discipline which will only uh, improve as he gets older but he's got that kind of wiry physique as well he's he's six foot maybe six foot one um, and he is he, quite difficult to get past uh, in a 1v1 duel. So he's very strong in that regard. And that's something which is also going to only improve because he is quite wary at the moment, but he's yet to fill out, right? Like he's still a teenager. But I do sort of move on to the, the negative slightly. I think that he can sometimes be a little bit over eager in the challenge. I think that watching some of, some of his clips, you can see that he does go to ground quite easily when he makes the tackle. And, you know, it, if that does come off, then, then it's a great skill. But if people know that he's going to go to ground quite quickly, then um, they can sort of play around him a little bit. Again, that's only going to come with experience, right? And I'm sure going to Madrid, they'll uh, they'll quickly get that out of him. Yeah, and I mean, when it comes to experience, for any of those out there who are perhaps a little bit worried, this is Real Madrid fans I'm speaking of in particular, perhaps a bit worried of how much experience he has and whether he'll be able to, you know, succeed at Real Madrid, whether it's too big of a step for him. What would you say about? You know just how many minutes he's put in because as i understand it it's he's he's played quite a bit for a teenager already yeah well when i wrote the the piece on the athletic it was i think it was only uh Bukayo saka at arsenal who had more minutes than him uh that season for a teenager across the top five european leagues and i think that's since changed um because i wrote that back in april that i think that's since changed to maybe pedri now has pedri barcelona has slightly more um minutes than him but he's amongst the the top three top five teenagers to play the most minutes across the top five European leagues. So this isn't someone who is just playing in the, the reserves or the academy of, of, his, uh, of his club. This is someone who's played a lot of first team men's football. In the grand scheme of things, of course, he's, he's inexperienced, but for a teenager, this isn't someone who's, uh, who's hardly played much football. So to sort of answer your question as well, I think that the short answer is that time will tell as to how much he can adapt to, uh, to playing for Real Madrid. There have been many fantastic world-class players who have not quite you know made the cut at Real Madrid but he's a long-term option right he's not someone who's expected to absolutely hit the ground running and be the the best player on the pitch he's got world-class players around him and while I'm sure he'll get a lot of minutes um this season and obviously the subsequent seasons he's got time on his side yeah, and this, let's just reiterate here. Um, we are speaking of what we've seen of him so far. We are not guaranteeing anything in the future, of course, although the future does look very bright. And and you mentioned the guys that he'll be sort of contending with for starting positions. And, you know, I don't think that the expectation is for him to go to Real Madrid and Carlo Ancelotti puts him into starting 11 right away and he never moves him from it. I don't think that's the expectation. But if we look at Casemiro, Kroos and, and Modric, if there was one that he would displace, where do you think he would fit? Because I think that this would have sort of helped Real Madrid fans understand what kind of midfielder he would be. Would he sort of fill in for Modric? Would he drop into defense and midfield for Casemiro? I mean, I guess you said he could play any position, really. 
Yeah, and that's not to, to duck out of answering your question, but I do think that he obviously has that versatility too. I think the, the short answer, again, I'd probably say not because of anyone's quality here, but simply because of age. I mean, you look at Modric, he's 35 now, and I know that he's still, you know, mixing it right at the top, but 35 is, he's not got too much longer, you know, left in his career. Tony Kroos, 31. Casemiro, I think, is 29. So I think he's got a bit more time on his side, maybe. He'd probably be the one who I imagine would be more fixed in the, uh, in the holding role. But simply because of Modric's age, I think he might be more the, the heir to Luka Modric. Finally, just to finish things off here, Mark, I know that this isn't always helpful for people uh, to sort of put a name next to this young player. But if you were to liken him to someone, to a current footballer, or, or even in the past, it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. Um, but if you were to liken him to someone, who would it be, just in the name of, you know, getting people to sort of what they can expect of Camavinga, the ki type of play style, etc. Yeah, this is something we, we often quite do quite often on, on The Athletic, just to kind of give that that image in, in someone's head if they haven't heard of a player, just who it is. And I am always reluctant to do that because you mm -hmm. do just set yourself up for a fall to be like they are the next X player or whoever it is. But, you know, he is Cam Eduardo Camavinga in his own right, of course. But if you were to push me, um, something that I've always um, thought of, and I think I've seen someone else say this as well, would be Moussa Dembele of Tottenham. So a midfielder who, who was playing so well for, for Tottenham all those years ago, who was that, again, kind of a rare breed, a, a dynamic player who's able to evade the press and dribble and carry his way out of um, tight situations in central areas, I think is quite rare you see in a midfielder. So I'd probably say Moussa Dembele in terms of style through The Athletic, we often use uh, data from Smarter Scout and um, we can look to see using algorithms what sort of players are similar through the data. Um, and more recent players would probably be Tangi, another Tottenham player, Tangi and Dombele. Anyone who's got Dembele probably at the moment <laughs> in terms of similarity, but slightly less similar in terms of statistically speaking similar. But one of the players who did crop up in the, the top 20 was Luka Modric. So uh, it does just maybe suggest that he is the uh, the heir to the throne um, for Luka Modric, which is a, a nice sort of neat uh, package there. You heard it here from Mark Carey that uh, that Eduardo Camavinga is the next Luka Modric. Video title done. It's over. It's sorted. But yeah, please don't hold me to that because he has a <laughs> long way to go to have the same titles, the same success that Modric had in his career. Um, purely in terms of stylistic profile, very much just based on that and, uh, and nothing else. So disclaimer underneath there. And there you have it, the Sparknotes version of who Camavinga is, why he was so sought after and what he can bring to Real Madrid's midfield. The 18 year old will be mixing it up with one of the more iconic midfield trios in modern football, Kroos, Modric and Casemiro. Not the worst mentors you could ask for, is it? I'd like to thank Mark once again for coming on. I've provided links to his Twitter, his profile on The Athletic, and much more, as well as the article he wrote on Camavinga. Do be sure to check him out and give him a follow, especially if you have an interest in the analytics side of things. But beyond that, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and if you enjoyed it, then a like really helps us out and makes the algorithm happy. My name's Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and we'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.